So I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is to install one of these 8.8 covers. The first step you want to do is you're going to go and get all your hardware laid out and make sure you have everything. You should have 10 bolts that hold the rear cover on. Uh, depending on your kit, you might have four countersunk bolts. You should have a breather port. You should have two fill ports, uh, plugs, and one drain plug. Uh, on these drains and these uh, a, uh, pipe thread fittings, you're going to put sealant on those, pipe, pipe, pipe thread sealant on those. And then you're going to have your two load bolts and your two lock nuts for your load bolts. So the first step is to take your load bolts and put a dab of silicone around the load bolt about halfway up and then start it in. And then you're just gonna flip the cover over and pull those through with an Allen wrench or whatever, get them all the way backed up out so that you can put the cover on and tighten it down. See there's a decent amount of play down in here before it gets to the top of the load bolt. Uh, you just want to have enough room so that it doesn't hit the main cap when you go to tighten these bolts down or else it's going to keep the cover from tightening up. So the next step is, um, and one note is on the Generation 1 covers, these first 200 covers that I made, the logo is actually upside down. So the logo will be up here on the top side when it mounts on the diff. And you can tell that by looking at your drain plug being on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to seal this surface, make sure this is nice and clean, get all the silicone off, so I'm gonna do that. Clean the silicone off uh, with a razor blade, and then I'm gonna go ahead, put a fresh bead of gray silicone on there, and you can use whatever brand you like. I tend to like the ultra gray uh, for this job. So put a bead of that on there, and then go ahead and tighten down the cover. Okay, so now you can see I have my cover fastened down. You can see how it squished out the silicone sealant so you can see that it's sealed good that it's all no gaps all the way around the other thing i want to mention is these holes in these cases make sure they are cleaned out because there can be silicone trapped in there and what can happen is that can keep your bolt from being able to get all the way down into the end of the threads and keep you from getting a good seal because it's not pulling down tight so make sure you go through these bolts and clean them out with like a little screwdriver or something to get all the debris out of there so the next step, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my load bolts with my Allen wrench and these only get hand tight. So you're going to take them down until you feel it touch right there and then just lightly turn it until you feel it snug, right? Same thing on this one, lightly down and then once you get there, just lightly turn it, just hand tight. Those just are supposed to just touch the back of the cap, not apply pressure. Then I'm gonna put my locking nuts on here and tighten them up. And again, just lightly tighten them up so that it keeps the load bolt from trying to back out is all you're trying to do there. Nothing crazy on your uh, torque on that. Maybe like 15 foot pounds or something like that. So now with the cover all tightened up, last step is to put some pipe thread sealant on the fittings for the breather, the drain and the fills. And on this cover, we have a fill on the back and then on chassis where it's like really tight to get in here where you can't get in there easily, like on the Mark IV Supra, um, there's a fill hole on this side. So you can service this easily. You can drain it and fill it without having to worry about pulling the diff down out of the car. Now you can see I have the cover installed. I have all the fill plugs in, the breather port in there, the fill and the drain. So it's all done. One thing to note, um, you can see the difference in these two cases. We have a, a Explorer here and a T-Bird here. This cover fits both cases the same. There are some differences in these cases, like the front mounts, you can tell they're definitely different. These use like a press-in style. These use a stacked type of bushing on the front. Uh, the stubs that go in here are different for these two cases as well. So that makes an axle uh, difference between the two cases. But generally, this is the strongest case, the Iron T-Bird. And then uh, this would be the next uh, strongest is the 06 and a half to 010 Explorer case. And then there's other cases like the 03 Cobra, which is, it looks almost just like this one, but aluminum. With the case complete, then it would be just the last step would be to mount your rear mount onto the case itself with the four countersunk bolts that come with the kit. So in this case, it's a uh, Mark IV Supra rear mount. And I make these for the IS 300 as well. 
Uh, the only difference is the bolt pattern back here is a little different. It actually goes vertically on this side. Um, and then I make the universal kit, which is that bar right there, which allows you to kind of fabricate, cut that down, weld to it, whatever you need to do to make it easy to mount the diff into your chassis. If you have something that's like kind of oddball, something that's never been done before, that helps you to fab it up. But I got a bunch of these kits going out today. You can see my table is full. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, just shoot me an email or you can buy the kit right through the website, granisracing.com. On the breather port, what I recommend to do is just run a piece of quarter inch uh, silicone line or vacuum line and take it up into your chassis somewhere and make a loop in it and then tie it up in with a zip tie or something like that just to keep it from um, having the having anything get down in there. You could even put a little filter on the top of it as long as it can breathe freely, um, but it's not really necessary. Um, but that's how I recommend running the breather line. It doesn't require a catch can. Um, these should not have any issues with splash out due to the increased um, capacity and the depth of these new covers is much deeper so it doesn't have a tendency to make the fluid so volatile inside of there and splash out. Since I have you here for this video I wanted to show you a quick difference in the stubs and one other note um, when you go to install your stubs always put Vaseline or some grease um, on each of these seals before you install the stubs just so it ensures that they get lubrication and don't burn up the seals when you first start driving the car. So here's the difference in the stubs. You can see on the Explorer case, the stubs have two steps on the seal po uh, portion of the stub. And then these are the T-Bird stubs right here. And you can see they have one step. So that's how you can tell the difference. So the T-Bird stub goes in and seals with the single step and the Explorer stub goes in and seals with the two steps, right? And here you can see the stubs installed and how they kind of line up. So you know how they look when they're installed. They should be kind of flush. And there is free play in them where they can come in and out a little bit on that clip. So the last thing is, this is normal, if you hear this. That's just the backlash in the gear. So don't be alarmed if you build your 8.8 .8 and you get that. That is 100% normal.